In this video, we're going to talk about a common laboratory method called titration. Um, what we do is we use this when we want to determine the concentration of a solution. And by concentration, I mean either the molarity of the solution or the percentage of something in that solution. Finding the molarity of a solution is called standardizing the solution. Okay, so if we have a standard solution, it means we know its molarity. If we're standardizing the solution, we're trying to discover its molarity. Okay, for instance, you might use titration to find the concentration of oxygen in a water sample, or maybe to find the percentage of alcohol in the bloodstream of a person who might have been drinking and driving. You would never do that, of course, that would be horribly wrong. So the setup for a titration, um, you have a burette. Now you probably remember during the measurement lab we looked at a burette and learned how to, to read you know, the volumes of a burette. But in the burette you put a solution called the titrant. Okay, It's the thing you're adding. And in this Erlenmeyer flask you put the solution that needs to be titrated. And you also put an indicator which I'll talk about soon. Okay, so the solution in the flask is usually unknown. Okay, That's the thing we're trying to standardize. This has an unknown molarity and this one here has a known molarity so we know what it is. We're going to use it to find the other one. For instance, we might put a base in there like NaOH. Okay, So maybe some NaOH whose molarity we know and maybe in here we have some acid like maybe HCl. Okay and we're trying to figure out what its molarity is because we don't know. This is what titration is used for. Okay, So first let me do an example kind of mathematically what it looks like and then talk a little bit about it, what it looks like in the lab. So for instance if it says it took me 16.7 milliliters of 1.25 molar NaOH to titrate, okay, that means to react with exactly 50 milliliters of an unknown concentration of HCl What's the molarity of the HCl? Now, before we can do anything, of course, we need to write a balanced equation. Okay, so NaOH and HCl okay, are going to make NaCl, just double replacement, right? And water. And as it turns out, it's all 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. So the mole ratios will be pretty simple. So remember, every time we see the volume and the molarity, we can go ahead and calculate the moles. So 1.25 molar times, got to be liters, 0.0167. Okay, so that's going to give us 0 0.0209 moles of NaOH. Okay, and then we'll do our mole ratio, even though it's kind of a waste of time, moles to moles, it's one to one. So we know that we have the same number of moles of HCl. Okay. It won't always be one-to-one, -one, so you have to have a balanced equation. And then since molarity is moles over liters, okay, we plug in our moles, 0209, and it said that we had 50 milliliters of the HCl, so 0 0.05, some zeros, and we discover that the molarity of our HCl was 0.418 molar HCl. Okay, so by figuring out how much NaOH we needed to titrate the HCl, we were able to standardize or discover the molarity of the HCl. Okay, well, when we did this reaction, how in the heck did we know it was done? Okay, well, I said a little earlier, in the flask, we not only put some acid, okay, we also put some indicator in there. We put an indicator in there. The indicator that we'll use for an acid-base reaction is called phenolphthalein, which is oh so exciting to learn how to spell. Okay, phenolphthalein. In most indicators are one color if your solution's acidic and a different color if your solution's basic. Phenolphthalein's cool because when it's an acid, it's colorless, and when it's basic, it's this bright, bright pink color that you couldn't possibly miss. So what happens as we add NaOH right from the burette into our flask we're gonna see a little bit of um, a pink color as it hits the indicator and turns pink 
but as we add the NaOH, it reacts with the HCl, so the color disappears. I add some more NaOH, and I see a pink color, but then the NaOH reacts with the HCl, and the pink color disappears. You do this for a while until eventually, when they add the NaOH, there's no more HCl left. So all you have now is the products and a little bit of extra NaOH. Well, as soon as you have a little bit of extra NaOH that hangs around and doesn't disappear, your solution turns pink. Okay? And that tells you that your reaction is done. Okay, so there's a couple of terms is end point. Okay, the end point. And one of them is the equivalence point. Okay, equivalence point. The equivalence point is when the reaction is exactly done. Okay, the reaction is done. In this case, when I added exactly the same number of moles of NaOH and HCl, the reaction was done. That's called the equivalence point. The end point is when the indicator changes color. Okay, indicator changes color. Now, hopefully you can imagine that we want the end point and the equivalence point to be the same. Okay, we want the indicator to change color when the reaction is done. And this can happen as long as you choose the right indicator. Now, for the most point, I'll tell you which indicator to use. But later in the year, we'll kind of we'll learn how we can pick an indicator that works well. So that's a titration. That's an acid-base titration. You can also do it with a redox reaction, which we will do in lab. So we'll do a titration pretty soon, and you'll get to see this um, as it, how it works out.